Hey guys, it's Hundred Bat here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to level very fast to level 99, but also how to get Damascus, Adamantite, Electrum, and Oricalcum while in the process. So let's get started. So first and foremost, you need these three Keyblades. You need the Crystal Snow, the Midnight Blue, and the Wheel of Fate. Now it is important at least one of these Keyblades is fully forged, fully synthesized before you start. Personally, I went with the Crystal Snow. If you don't have the materials to synthesize, First of all, if you don't have Damascus, you want to go to San Francisco. Once you land here, there is going to be a lot of space debris and you really just want to destroy it. This will eventually give you enough Damascus to upgrade. Secondly, if you don't have Electrum, Oricalcum, or Adamantite, if you go to the Keyblade Graveyard and you destroy the space debris there, that should give you enough of these synthesis materials. The reason why I picked these three Keyblades is because they allow you to use Grand Magic. Although the Crystal Snow only has a Blizzard boost on it, we will be using a lot of Blizzard based attacks, so getting a Blizzard boost will definitely help. The Wheel of Fate has Waterza, and the Midnight Blue has Blizzaza, which is again a Blizzard based attack. Let's move on to other equipment. Honestly, when it comes to armor, you can go for anything, however, higher dark resistance will help you. As for accessories, I went with the Mickey Clasp, the Fire Cufflink, and Master's Ring. The Fire Cufflink actually adds another Grand Magic, which is the Fire Raza. This is again not needed, however if you do have this, it may help. The Mickey class will help you the most as it increases your MP recharge rate by 30%, and it also puts on Endless Magic, which allows you to make magic combos without any restrictions. The Mickey class is only obtainable if you get all 90 Lucky Emblems. The second most important character for this strategy has to be Donald as you won't have time to heal yourself because you'll be constantly casting magic. So it is important that the equipment Donald has complements his healing abilities so you don't have to worry about your HP. For Donald's equipment I went with the Oricalcum Ring, Master's Necklace and Celeste Triad. I'd say the most important out of these three has to be the Oricalcum Ring. This is craftable at the Moogle shop. Although I will leave in the description below how to get all the equipment that I use. When it comes to Goofy and Hercules, just make them strength heavy, there isn't really anything specific for them. However, if possible, put the team effort ability on for Hercules. What this ability allows you to do is as soon as the battle starts, you can use attack commands. So in Hercules' case, it's the spinning ability. The third step for preparation is using the Kazin. Using Bust will definitely help you out. Although they will usually specialize in HP and MP, it's still worth it as it usually lasts 25 minutes or so but also because you'll be using MP heavily. Let's talk about Sora's abilities now. I recommend that you have Grand Magic Extended Equip. This actually allows the Grand Magic to be available for longer, so if you're in a tense battle, this can be very helpful, although this is not needed. Next ability I would recommend is the Magic Galvanizer. This increases magic damage depending on how high your magic combo is. You can also stack this to make this even stronger. Lastly, it's a must that you have the Aero Boost, Water Boost, and Blizzard Boost equipped. Now it is optional you also have the Fire Boost equipped, however if you don't have the Fire Raza ability, it's not needed. When it comes to the actual battle, you want to head to the Colosseum, specifically the Courtyard area. When you're there, you want to interact with the Battle Gate. Let's talk about the actual battle itself and how to combat it. As soon as the match starts, I like to use Aeroga and then to follow it by Blizzaga. The reason why I do this is because this launches them into the air and suspends them for a bit. Then I use Blizzaga as this attacks a lot of enemies at once. Now primarily alternating between these two spells should be your strategy, however using Waterga if the enemies have a weakness is also a good idea. Your Grand Magic Gauge will fail regularly, but it's important that you're using it appropriately, as Grand Magic is very powerful and you really want to maximize its power and not waste it. One thing to keep in mind for your spells is that when you do use them, for example, Iroga, there will always be a window of opportunity for an aerial attack. But you do need to realize when you are up in the air, you cannot use Grand Magic. So it may be sometimes better to avoid this opportunity and get Sora back onto his feet as quickly as possible. Due to the nature of this strategy, MP will be running out incredibly fast. So the way to get around this is to make sure everyone has Aether equipped or something else like Elixir. However, using attractions at this point, or simply just fighting, will help you buy some time. The last main point about the strategy is, make sure the enemies are in clusters. If they are in clusters, then you'll be able to take them down quickly, 
and you'll also be doing damage to them all at the same time. Whereas if they're individually, it will take more time and the abilities just won't be as useful. So in roughly 20 minutes, I gained 7 levels. This will obviously vary depending on your level, however, the stronger you get, the faster you'll be clearing this battle gate. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video, I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave it down in the comments below. I will be making some more Kingdom Hearts 3 videos, so be at the lookout for that. Thank you so much my fellow undead, keep roaming, peace.